Hello guys, it's Jimax from Jimax Studios and today I'm going to be working on this picture from start to finish. Also, I'm combining this online tutorials with a live class, a live session straight from my studio. And then, um, if in case I get patience from my guys over here, I will tend to answer it. So please, um, flow along and I guess you would also enjoy this session. Okay, all right. Today I'm going to be working on this series of images. Um, we have this for I did a ton of pictures for this client, and um, I I particularly love her looks. For me, I don't think I'm a big fan of this makeup or of her makeup, but I love her looks. So I thought I should use this picture to work something out so I can get to see how I would also manipulate this image. To give me that very beautiful look like I always do okay so back to the world of Photoshop I'm actually working on this image and this is my camera raw. for me I use camera raw for most of my camera raw processing so um, this is straight from the camera and then just the picture so first of all for me I would want to reduce the highlights I'm particular about that I'll reduce my highlights then I would also want to reduce increase my white because I was able to reduce my highlight then um, for some dark areas I might want to increase this a little bit so I think um, 22 will be fine okay 21 will be fine okay many at times many image varies so if this setting doesn't work for you just understand that okay this highlight stands for the white areas that if I move it all the way down you gotta see that the light on the face is being removed because of i reduced this highlight but i don't want to reduce it all down i just want to take it off a little bit so that i can place a balance on it so i think i'm fine with 38 so if maybe for the other image you're working on and then you're having um issues that the light is too much you can as well reduce exposure and then also reduce your highlight to get that beautiful result that you would want Okay, so for me, I will reduce the highlight. Then I would also want to um, reduce the shadows. Okay, increase the shadows, and then I would add these blacks a bit so that I get that depth. So I will go for my texture, and then I'll just increase my texture because I want my image looking very strong and all sharp. So this is another secret. Many people ask, um, how do I tend to get those beautiful? sharpness this is one of my secrets i do to get that so add my texture depending on the image also and then i want to add my clarity at least let's say seven seven should be fine so that whatever i do i get that playback on the texture even my frequency to give me that result so um for now it's fine um also for this image for me to be able to get at least some balance on the neck here before i continue i would want to pick up my brush on my Camera scroll processing, and then I would want to brush on the neck so that I could let me review some details that are on the shadows. So when I get to my frequency separation, I will not have a very dark neck. So I'll just be particular about the neck and then maybe some areas on her skin towards the neck area. So I'll just increase the shadows a bit. So if I reduce it, you see the effect. So okay. Yeah, I'm good. I think that's fine. So now one quick way that we can actually work on the rest. Instead of going through all of them and then doing the same process again, we don't have to. As far as we have done on this, we have done it on this first one. I will just click on it and then click hold my shift and then click the last one. Or I can just quickly click on one and then I'll do control A and it automatically picks all of them, select all of them. And then I would quickly click on any of this icon. I can click on this icon. Once you click on the icon, it will show the synchronized um, setup. And then what this means is any of these that you pick is what will be synchronized. So if I'm picking my basic or my curve or my details or whatever I want for it to be to for it to go all around for the image is what goes. So if I don't want my wide my exposure to go all around. Then it won't go around, but I'm fine. I think I want everything to go around. Okay, there's one thing that I have not done. 
and I normally used to do it when I'm working on a dark skin I would always want to go to my my color mixer that's my HSL and then I'll go to my luminance we know very well that dark skin is always um, should have less light so that dark skin will come out very well so I'll go to the luminance of my dark skin and then I will want to reduce the, expo the luminance of the dark skin and I'll reduce it at least a bit I think 21 to be fine and then maybe yeah it should be fine so you notice now the skin is looking more darker than before this is another way to perfectly get that blend on your dark skin model so for those of us that love dark skin like myself okay so you could do that to be able to get that blend and the beauty about this is when maybe i did all of that coming here as far as all of them are highlighted the effect i did here affected this one so if you notice i did it only here but it affected both this this it didn't change and this so if i highlight all and i do any effects it automatically affects all so i'll just do my control there because i'm not after that right now so i think for this image it's kind of dark but i like it so i guess i'll just use 0.20 that's fine so i'm good so i'll just select all of them and then i'll click open all right so we just finished how we do our camera roll and this is the first part of this tutorial we have the complete series that will be dropping on this channel and if you're new to our channel please do well to subscribe don't forget to turn on the notification so that each time um, a video is being released you get to be notified and if you like this video and our previous videos please do well to like comment and as well please share to support us do this for everyone thank you so much thank you for watching until we see you again in the next series remain creative